so excited. Um, it's so fucking amazing how quickly I can go from like, I'm so excited about these videos and I'm so excited to do them every day and this feels amazing and this feels so good. You can probably see my ass in the mirror. This is great. <laughs> to like all of those doubts and fears creeping in and like all of the expectations up on myself to be like, this is wrong. I'm not doing this right. This is like too much. This is too little. All I wanted to do with these videos is jump on and be all of myself and get excited. And I think I just get too excited. Not too excited, but it's just all really exciting. And then I just like put all the pressure on and the expectations heap on and it's just like this But it has to look like this and you have to sound like this and it has to feel like this and it has to do this And what if one day this is the fear that came up for me this morning that I just want to like voice And again without over expressing coming back to my center The fear that I want to express that came up for me this morning was that I'll be found out I'll be called a fraud that everyone I know will get together behind my back and plan to um, institutionalize me for being insane um, and that seriously and that like the fear around like insanity and being called out as like being insane and it's like how much of that is probably past life stuff coming in maybe um, but also like how much of that rules our lives right this fear of like if only they knew that I was insane and how bullshit is that that like <laughs> Of course we're insane. We're all fucking insane. We're literally spinning around in this like tiny blue planet with like galaxies and star systems and aliens floating around alongside of us. It's like if you're not if you're living in this world and you're not a little bit like a little bit insane by like what this world is and and just the very nature of this existence, then are you really doing it right? Like of course we're insane. But it was it was this really real fear that or not real, but it was a fear, the feeling that came with it was very, very real, um, which was that like, I can't keep showing up and doing this because one day I'm gonna get found out, one day people are gonna find this, one day it's gonna jeopardize my future chances of success. Like just all these fears were coming up and who knows, they could be really real and one day these videos could come back and bite me in the ass and one day I could be like, <laughs> going for some insanely successful promotion or big job or like interview or whatever. And this video is going to come up and people are going to be like, sorry, we can't lie to you. Sorry, we can't do this anymore. Sorry, you can't have that position anymore. And it's going to be like a big thing. But I honestly believe that my truth on this matter, and now I'm saying it, my truth on this matter. I don't want to believe that being all of who I am will prevent me from succeeding in life. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to believe that I have to like tame or like cut off or like not let out, like box in a certain part of my expression and a certain like all the valuable parts of who I am. I don't want to lock them away just because it might like jeopardize my future success. And I don't know, like I don't really want to like live in a world where that's the case and not like I don't want to live in the world but like I don't want to live in a world where it's like I have to choose between like being the full expression of who I am and like letting this out and doing the things I really want to do or like getting a job that I really want do you know what I mean so it's like I kind of I don't want to believe that this would jeopardize my future success now I'm saying that I'm like okay you don't have to um so I'm gonna work on shifting that limiting belief but that was really real for me this morning that fear came up that like I'm gonna be found out as being insane and that it's gonna be this big thing that comes out and it's gonna be like it's gonna prevent me from reaching all this future success and it's like oh what a joke what a joke what a joke but also fears are real fears are valid you're totally okay um I just felt all this excitement coming forward this morning and just this playful energy. I feel like my spirit's doing like flips and cartwheels and just wants to be like, woo, this is so fun. Um, but also acknowledging that there was just like a fuck ton of expectation that came up around this this morning. Um, I was reading my human design report last night and something that it voiced or something that it brought to my attention was this idea that it's really important, like I'm a projector, human design type, I'm a projector. And this human design stuff is like, so revolutionized the way that I see myself and the way that I live my life. But, um, and one of the things that it said as projectors is really important is, um,
Mm. I just totally lost my scent off. <laughs> This is what happens in life, hey? This is what happens like on lives. This is what I found was happening for me. I'd get so excited about something that I would lose my center. And I would be so like up here that like the tiniest little thing would distract me. And it's not that what I was saying wasn't like relevant or valuable. It was just that like, I was just communicating from up here and then like the tiniest little thing would throw me off and then I would freak out. And even just then I had that thought of like, oh shit, I don't know what I'm saying next. I forgot what I was saying. <sighs> and then it creates that like self-perpetuating ner self perpetuating nervous energy cycle of like, I forgot what I was saying and I was on a tangent and now I don't know how to bring it back. And it's like, it's okay. I can bring it back. I can always bring it back. I think this is what I'm practicing more than anything is like <sighs> coming back to my center. Even when there's a camera pointed at me, even when there's the possibility that someone might see this one day, even when I'm in the container of communication and consciously communicating my message or a message. Yeah, there's no rush. <laughs> I had this thing come up this morning where I just wanted to bloody scream, like scream bloody murder. It was so weird. It was just this feeling of being like, for all the times that I've wanted to scream for help, but haven't wanted to cause a scene or haven't felt like I could. Um, yeah, and it's created just like this, I can feel this like ickiness in my throat. <sighs> yeah. I did my practice this morning, my self-pleasure practice and my meditation practice. And I'm emphasizing that word because it is a practice and I will never ever get it right. <laughs> and that's okay, because that's not the fucking point. <laughs> but seriously, um, I did some self-pleasure this morning and it's not self-pleasure in like a, like a carnal sort of like, what everyone thinks of self-pleasure as being. I think, well, certainly what I thought self-pleasure was. It's more of like a, um, It's creating a container and creating a space where I can bring home all the parts of myself, all the parts of me that I've rejected during the day, I can bring them home and I can bring them into me and I can play with them and open up the channels in my body. And that's quite a pleasurable experience when you think about it. Um, sometimes it's really painful and sometimes it's really like, I just go numb and sometimes I just get bored and sometimes I just feel nothing. <laughs> It's really funny. Um, but yeah, my practice this morning, my meditation, it wasn't anything special. And I sometimes have this like thing that I like chase peace, which is like so paradoxical, but I like chase inner peace. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I'm going to get there. Like peace is good. It's just around the corner. Like I just have to let go of some more stuff. And my mind kind of gets in the way, like massively. My mind just like wants to, and my poor mind, like I give it so much shit, but my mind just wants to like insert itself into the experience because it thinks it's being helpful. It's like a really helpful, like that really helpful guy or like person or friend at a party who's always just like, do you need anything? Like, hello, hello, can I help you? Um, I'm still here. Do you need anything? And I'm just like, fuck off. In the past, I've just been like, fuck off, mate. Seriously, like, I don't want you. I don't need you. And I've tried to, like, shut the door on him and be like, just fuck off. Like, come on. Not today. Like, not today. 
<laughs> Seriously, is anyone else like getting that analogy in their mind right now? This guy is their mind and this guy. <laughs> it's like the guy at an orgy who's like handing out snacks. <laughs> this is why I'm going to be committed. No, I'm so grateful that I have the platform to express myself completely authentically. <laughs> um, but it was really funny. It's like, <laughs> just show up and be all of yourself, right? That's all we ever have to do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my mind was like, literally, this guy at a party being like, do you need anything? I'm still here. I need me to analyze any numbers for you. This guy in my head, he's like, he's like really intelligent. He's really smart. And he just wants to like, come in and analyze the shit out of stuff and like help you with any maths that you might have or problems that you might have that he needs to solve. He's a problem solver. I like that about him. Um, but yeah, my whole like strategy for like dealing with the mind has been like shutting the door on him and being like, nah, mate, like I'm just gonna, or like kind of pretending he doesn't exist almost. And like, I love meditation. I love like observing my thoughts and becoming the observer of my mind. I think that's so, that's like literally so fucking powerful becoming the observer of what's going on in here. And so you can let it pass without attaching to it. So instead of just like sitting at his feet and using this metaphor again, sitting at this guy's feet and being like listening to everything he says. And like, if he just like starts malfunctioning and spitting out random shit because of the way that he's been programmed, because he's just a computer, right? Um, he's a fucking amazing supercomputer, but he's also just like a computer in that sense. Our brains are a computer until we learn how to program them and function them and use them in a different way um, and function them in a until we know how to access different functions within them, within the brain and within the computer. They're just fucking computers that just spit out what they've absorbed. Um, and it's like a, the result in like programming, like result of our programming and our conditioning. Anyway, so I'd like sit at his feet and listen to everything he had to say. And then it's like letting that go and moving into the space of like, okay, I'm just gonna like, let your ideas pass through me and just not like attach to them and not pay much attention to them. <sighs> but I feel like this morning that was different. I feel like, oh fuck, my jaw is so sore. I said that to my mum last night and she laughed. She's like, <laughs> it's from screaming. Seriously, from screaming into a pillow because I do this. And I like smush my face. I smush my face and it, uh, over my mouth. And it's like, oh. I want to process energy. I do a lot of yawning. I'm like, oh. I'm clearing energy I do a lot of yawning when I'm like processing stuff I do a lot of yawning and it like I can feel it like the energy runs up to here and it threw me and then I just poof let it out my crown chakra let it out poof um but yeah it's so funny when I go to yawn now it's like uh 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 and it really hurts <laughs> but it's okay and I'm okay and this is fun and amazing this is such good practice you guys this is such good practice <sighs> for showing up and being all of who I am on camera and on lives and just on all of the things um and it helps that i don't know if anyone's ever gonna see this <laughs> um but yeah in my meditation practice this morning what was i talking about the relationship with my mind it was like it was like It was like I was lying there and there was a point where my mind was trying to insert himself into the experience and trying just in like the most beautiful way like I have a really healthy relationship with my mind now I feel like my mental health is just fucking amazing at this present moment and in the last couple of months and in the last couple of weeks and it's like my mind just wanted to come in and sort of give me his take on what was happening in my body. 
So I was lying there and I just wanted to do some healing on myself. So I was like accessing the power of infinite intelligence to heal my body as you do on a Friday morning. And, and, um, and it was like, my mind wanted to come in with this like perspective or this take on it that was like, Oh, well maybe it just wanted to help. Like I just got this sense of like, my mind just wanted to really just like insert itself into the experience to offer a perspective like to say his piece on what was going on and what was happening with the intention that maybe or like from the space of like maybe we'll need to teach people this one day and I feel like my mind wants to do that so much of like it wants to insert itself into every experience because there's this feeling of like we want to take this knowledge and we want to know what's going on with the intention that we could share this experience. Like we can teach people this one day, like this experience could be really useful and helpful. And as I'm saying this, I'm like, fuck my mind is like, my our minds are awesome. Like our minds are so, they're just, they're so, they want to help. Like they so want to help. Um, and we kind of demonize them. I've certainly demonized mine. Um, but yeah, it was coming from such a loving place. Like my mind was coming from such a loving place. It was like, Hey babe, like, Let's just kind of like suss out the sitch, like get the four, like 411 on what's like, get the DL on what's happening here in our body so that we can explain this later, or so that we can express this later, or so we can like tell people about this later in case they want to recreate this experience or have this experience too. Like we can tell them how to do it. And I just had to be like, babe, it's okay. Like I don't actually um, just release all the pressure and expectation around that. Um, and I just had to be like, it's okay, babe. Like I don't need you right now. And not in the sense of like, I don't want to like, yeah, I don't want to demonize my mind and I don't want to like fucking slam the door on him. And I don't want to make it feel like it's not valuable or worthy or valid because our, our brains are like fucking amazing. Um, and I read this beautiful quote, Liz Gilbert talked about it the other day. She's like having sacred stewardship over our minds and my mind has been at times my both my best friend and my worst enemy um it's been my safe place that i've like my security that i've retreated to like i've just lived a life of the mind for a lot of my life because that's where i felt the safest because that's where i could like be rational and logical and just like analyze everything that came into my sphere and everything had a place and everything had a box and then i went fucking crazy and got bipolar <laughs> but seriously <laughs> um and I feel like it's all just like, what's our relationship with our mind? I'll never forget I had a coach and she was like, do you ever just pour love on your mind? I was like, fuck no, my mind is like my worst enemy. And when I started to like have more of a life of the body, I kind of like, was like, fuck, this is amazing. And I kind of just like, um, I just kind of like demonized my mind as like the root source of all my problems. Do you know what I mean? I was like, it's cause of my brain because I have mental illness. It's because of like all the mental health issues that I have in my head. Oh. <laughs> There's still so much stigma around that. Hey, fuck. Even just then I was like actually going on camera and saying that I've had a mental illness in the past just conjures up all these images of like a crazy woman. And it's so funny that like that image of like a, a crazy, like a witch or a woman being locked up in an insane asylum and like how a woman, like for me, like my worst fear is being called crazy or hysterical or insane um, and I feel like that's maybe a product of like a patriarchal culture slash just a product of like the images that we've received, like I've received growing up. But yeah, that's definitely the image I get when I say that as like a woman with mental illness and like the fear that like how many people will just immediately switch off because of that. And I was reading my journal last night, actually. Oh, this is huge. I was reading, um, I was reading in my journal last night how when I went on this whole journey with my body, um, how much of me was really afraid that people wouldn't listen or wouldn't like what I had to say if they didn't like the package that it came in. And this fear that I carried around as a woman or just as a human fucking physical being on the planet, that if like I had to be beautiful to um, be worthy of having a voice or for my voice to be valuable. Like it had to be, um, yeah, like I had to be beautiful. Like I just had to be beautiful if I wanted to be heard. And it's like, fuck, like, oh, that just kills me now. Cause I'm like, how much of my time, energy, resources, like energy expense, like how 
expensive was that? Um, did I invest or like did I expend? How much of my time, energy and resources did I expend? I'm like trying to make myself beautiful. Like, what the fuck? I like, I've had surgery. Um, I don't have, um, I had a breast reduction when I was 19. Let's just put that out there because why not? Um, there's a whole backstory into that. I just don't feel like I need to go into it now. Um, a lot of it was to do with like, I just had hectic lower back pain and there could also be some stuff there around. It was like my programming and maybe I wouldn't make the same decision if I had the awareness and the consciousness that I do now three years ago, because I'm still paying off the $10,000 loan I took out. <laughs> um, but yeah, like how much we feel like we need to, hello, little white feather. How much we feel like we need to um, like change ourselves, right? And how much we feel like we need to um, alter ourselves or like become so that, you know, we're valuable. Like, fuck. What was I just talking about before? I think this idea that, yeah, that's right. I have to be a certain way so that people will listen. Mm. Which I think just like boils down to like, I have to be a certain way. <sighs> I'm just acknowledging that like so much of this is like I'm gonna look back on these videos and be like and have with a whole new level of awareness and be like wow unpacking so much more there's so much more I've yet to learn and there's so much more depth I've yet to access seriously so much it's like yeah drop in the ocean <laughs> literally feels like that drop ocean me drop ocean <laughs> um, But just also acknowledging that I feel like I'm so, oh, and I feel so weird saying this, but I'm so beautiful and I feel that. I feel that and I know that. And there's so much like, fuck, there's so much judgment and shame around like claiming your power as a beautiful, or claiming like owning the fact that you know that you're a beautiful woman or owning the knowledge of your beauty. Um, and it's nothing like I have an affirmation that's like I grow more and more beautiful every single day. And I truly believe that I'm, a be I'm beautiful inside and out. There are parts of me that are really, and I think I can fully own that. And I fully owned that now because I've, or, and I've embraced my ugliness or because I've embraced my ugliness. I don't really know how that works. I just know that I've done both. Like I've looked in the mirror and I've seen my ugliness. I've like looked at all the parts of myself and we're not talking about physical physicality, obviously. I've like looked at like, the, I've taken out and examined like the ugliest pieces of me. I look at my behavior like when I, and I think this is huge for any like, for addicts in general, right? <laughs> and like for the recovery journey as a whole and this piece around like acknowledging your ugliness and coming to like facing, coming face to face with it. Cause like, fuck, there's so much ugliness inherent in addiction. And there's so much like it really, it's like the work, it's the shadow side of human nature and it's like the worst of human nature. Like I've seen the fucking worst pieces and sides of myself and there's still parts of this that are definitely unhealed. So just like keep that in mind when you're like presencing this and receiving this, but, um, and acknowledge that. Yeah. I just want to acknowledge that, but there's so much of this that, that's unhealed, but yeah, there's so much like ugliness inherent in addiction, like the things that I did and the things that I said and the way that I treated people like fuck. It was really just like the worst of human nature and the worst of like all I can be. And I think because I no longer reject those parts of myself, like I kind of called them in, like a lot of them, most of them, a lot of them, I've called them back into myself and I'm not like trying to like, like that was then and this is now and that was the old me and fuck her and whatever. And like, I have to like cut off the sins of my past and like shit, like throw them out with the the old water and cleanse and renewed and like I'm a new create like I am a new creation I'm a new person but I also acknowledge that like it's not this like line in the sand like BCAD do you know what I mean it's not like before addiction after addiction um and there's not one fucking moment where I'm just like made anew I acknowledge that like they're very real parts of me like my pain which is obviously the root of like all the like, a lot of the shit that I caused and the really ugly things that I did is still very much a part of me my anxiety which causes caused me to like act out and just like be a shit human in the world and be really like uptight all the time 
my like my fear my jealousy my anger like all these parts of me still exist and I didn't sort of like just like wash myself clean of them and sort of like step into this I tried to <laughs> I really fucking tried to I thought I could um I thought that that's what I was supposed to do I genuinely thought that's what I was supposed to do at some point I think I thought that's what I was supposed to do is like I'm just gonna what like step aside now I've been baptized I can just like step into the newness and I there's an element of that absolutely but it's like and I do believe in radical healing in an instant. I do believe that we can be radically transformed in like miracles, right? I do believe in radical, miraculous transformation in a moment. Um, and I believe that that happens. But I think for me, it was like fully owning my beauty now is like owning my light is because I've owned my darkness. And because I can like face off with that part of myself that is jealous, that is insane, that is mentally ill, that is unstable, that is like... Um, really fucking like ugly that is really like as a human being really ugly really like petty really like just wants to like the second something rises up within her that really hurts so she just wants to fucking hurt that person back and so it's that reactionary kind of that part of me right and we all have it right like the line between good and evil doesn't run between like countries or religions or whatever it's just a line that runs between like in the human heart like it runs within all of us and I think embracing my beauty is embracing my darkness and embracing that part of me that is just like that smallness like embracing my smallness because there's a part of me that is still very much that like reptilian or that animal brain that just wants to like get my needs met it's quite selfish like feeds off those ego based desires of like jealousy and comparison and competition and and it's like scarcity it's like feeds off scarcity and it's like there's not enough to go around i have to fight to get what i want and like it's just like yeah those ego based desires right of like lust and greed and like fear and like <laughs> and she feeds off that and i just so acknowledge that that's still a part of me and that still exists within me and i don't i to be honest i don't think that like transcending like that ego like those base nate like that base nature is like i don't i don't know that that's a thing that will happen in this lifetime slash i don't know that it's a thing i want to happen in this lifetime um and also i just don't fucking know like i just genuinely have no fucking idea um but it's yeah it's really funny it's really funny um I'm just conscious that I don't want to expend too much creative energy doing this because I have other stuff that I want to create today. But also acknowledging that I can create whatever I want to. <laughs> um, but yeah, part of my journey of like embracing my power as a beautiful woman um, and embracing my beauty, like beauty, not beauty, beauty, like the thing that like fucking my energy speaks for me. And I was walking around and that's like my intention in the world is like your, my energy precedes me and I let my energy go before me. My energy introduces me before I even speak. Do you know what I mean? And I think like that's part of what these videos are and what I, my intention with these videos as well is like to just let my energy do the talking. But it looks like my mouth has got some shit to say as well. <laughs> But it is, it's just like, it's such, beauty is so energetic. It has fucking nothing to do with anything else. It's literally so energetic. And I, I recognize that and I feel that now, that beauty in, you know, all people. Like I literally, I feel it in so many different kind, kinds of people. And um, I want to like, I want to focus on that. I want to focus on, I went through this phase. I just realized yesterday that I was like, I was focusing so much on, other people's flaws because I was focused on my own. Like I had so much self judgment and I was so focused on like fixing and healing the things that are wrong with me and focusing on like, just like happened kind of like accidentally. I just started focusing on the things that I didn't like about myself. And then I found that I was like zeroing in on the things that I didn't like about other people. And it's just like, I was drawing that it's just sucks. Cause like being on the receiving end of that fucking sucks. And I'm just like, so owning my part in like, I, don't like that I do that <laughs> and I hate that I like would ever make people feel judged in my presence you know what I mean but it's genuinely because I was just judging the fuck out of myself and like that part of me just kind of like slipped out and without really realizing it I was unconsciously judging other people and then obviously people can I think people can feel that and maybe they can feel your love and your energy and your presence but they can also feel the level of like self-judgment you have upon yourself being like projected onto them if that makes sense so it was like because I was judging myself so hardcore, they could feel like that 
that self judgment was like coming, reflecting, projecting off on them. Um, and depending on the human as to how they reacted and respond to that, some people like obviously like are really hurt by that, like rightly so. Um, and I can, yeah, I definitely, I just want to focus on the things that I love about people. And I just want to focus on the things that I love about myself and literally use the power of my like energy and intention to draw my focus and draw my awareness to the things that I love about people and to all the things that feel good about people and to all the things that like, to all the things that are like the qualities that I love, the qualities that are just so like, mm, in people I love like, mm, the fucking juicy qualities that I love. Yeah. All right. I'm feeling so overexpressed right now. I've just like, whew, <sighs> and I'm just like, <sighs> I get to bring it all back into my body. This is like what myself, a lot of my self pleasure practice looks like. It's like being in a pillow and just like getting jiggy with it. I put on music. I don't know. I've got to figure out if I'm allowed to play music on these things so I can dance. Dance for me. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, but that's literally my affirmation just to presence that. I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. Um, my light is so beautiful. But it's like to presence that. My affirmation is literally I grow more and more beautiful every single fucking day. And I get to own that. I get to really fucking own that. You get to own that too. <laughs> okay. So this is genuinely what my self-pleasure pra practice looks like. It looks like creating like half an hour in the morning. And this is just like my practice like... You might have a yoga practice or you might have like a spiritual practice or whatever. Um, creating a container 30 minutes in the morning, setting my timer on my phone for 30 minutes, um, putting on a playlist and just going for it and trying to remind my mind that it's okay. Like how would it feel? I sometimes like ask myself the question, what would I do right now if my, like if I just let life come through me, literally. Like if life was just fully like expressing herself through me right now, what would I, what would I like want to create? What would I do? What would, like what feels good in my body? What do I want to like, what sounds do I want to make? What would I be like, how would I be dancing? Would I just be like sitting here like this, like, oh, like in the fetal position weeping? Like if my mind, you know, had nothing to do with it or, you know, if I just wanted to let life move through me right now, what would happen? Um, breath work is a big part of it. Like, <sighs> Coming back to the breath, um, breath work has been huge for me, really big. I just have a lot of joy today. <laughs> how scary and how vulnerable, last thing I promise before I go. Look at me trying to like wrap myself up like I have a time limit that I have to adhere to, like stick to, what the fuck? Come on me, we have all the time in the world. <laughs> but seriously, I feel like energetically, this is the time we have. Um, and it still feels like an edge for me to take up time because I still feel like I'm going over time or like someone's going to cut me off in a second or someone's going to like come in and get the hook. And it's just, there's so much beauty and freedom and just having like allowing myself unlimited space to express fully here. This is so fucking, this is new, different, new, feels weird. Um, feels really weird. But yeah, oh, what was I talking about? <laughs> um, okay, it'll come back. God, angels, universe, guides of the highest truth and intention. I call that thought back to me now. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's just like talk about your heart. Okay. So I feel like as long as I am connected to my heart space. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Joy as a vulnerable emotion. It always comes back. <laughs> um, yeah, joy is like a really vulnerable emotion. I have a practice now where I kind of just like express whatever wants to come through. And I'm really honest with myself about what wants to come through. And if it's not appropriate or it's not safe for me to feel it in the moment, like I just don't feel like safe to fully feel it and express it in the moment and like go into it, like dive into it in the moment. 
um, I will set aside some time later to do it. But I was in the car yesterday and I could feel like something was like, I don't know, I just, I could feel that I wanted to shove some stuff down. Um, and for me, that feels like I want to eat when I'm not hungry. I want to um, go like straight back up into my head and just like think and overanalyze and I'll find myself like going round and round and like thought loops, like mental loops. Um, and yeah, I could just like was present seeing some stuff was coming up. And I realized that it was joy. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Seriously, it was my joy wanting to come out and be expressed. And I was like, no, 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 not right now. Thank you. No, no, no. And it's like, sometimes the emotion that wants to come through is fucking joy. Like, seriously, seriously, sometimes the emotion that wants to come through is joy. And how many of us are like not fucking feeling it because it's vulnerable. Joy is a really vulnerable emotion. I had a client say to me yesterday, she's like, it's a really, there's a long way to fall. Um, or there's a long way to go. And this was my thing. I always had this thing of like, without going into the story or getting tied up in the story. Um, yeah. Just presencing that fear. The higher you go, the harder you fall. Like, oh, even in my body now, I'm just like, feel a bit of resistance to it. There's so many pieces of myself that are here right now. Everyone's like, wants to have their say. There's a part of me that's just landed that knows that this is what I used to do on lives. I used to come on, show up, like come in, give all, give everything I had, just like boom, 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 boom. And then just end it. And a part of me would feel really ripped off by the whole experience because I felt like I was showing up and just like projecting all of myself basically um, and not receiving anything back. And I wasn't like, uh, it didn't feel juicy at all. It felt like, oh, just felt like ugh. Um, it felt like being taken advantage of like I was taking advantage of myself. It doesn't, I don't know, I don't want it to feel like that anymore. It gets to feel juicy. It gets to feel whole. And I get to experience and receive the pleasure inherent in this as much as anyone who would be receiving it might. I'm just gonna sit for a little while. And just call all of my energy and my power back.
the temptation is so there to rush. And the temptation is so there to just like bypass the vulnerability and just like and get to the point really fucking quickly. I don't want to jump off these lives and feel used or like I've overexpressed. And it's also not your responsibility, anyone out there. It's not anyone else's responsibility to make me feel like I haven't done that. Make me feel less expressed or whatever. I get to own that. And right now I'm owning that this feels really good for me. Yeah. Just sitting and being. And I'm dropping all the judgment from here and in my life that you can't just sit and be, what are you doing? <laughs> You have to give. <laughs> so much dropping in for me right now. Just about how, like, <laughs> I don't have to rush it, like. I don't have to like expend all of my energy out there. <sighs> this is my gift. Like this is embodied presence is my fucking gift. <laughs> this is my gift. My heart is my gift. My being is my gift. My presence, my energy is my gift. It's healing. I feel like <sighs> bring it on back to you. <laughs> Seriously.
Christmas Day. I feel like life really wants to communicate something through me right now. <laughs> and that uh, I just, it's just light. Yeah, light. Light. You feel it? Light. And. some stuff that wants to open up now and we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, yeah, <laughs> Speak your truth and time will expand. Speak your truth and time will expand. <laughs> 